Hello, world and universe. I'm Jay Sherm. In today's episode of Future Tech, we're going to talk about what cloud storage will look like in the future. And to talk about this topic, uh, I have someone really special because we've known each other for quite some time in a community on Discord for a company called SC Prime and also a new Examiner machine. And uh, he's a really good community supporter, Henry Wilson. Thanks for joining me today, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Happy to be here. Yeah, me too. And the, the first question I get from people when I start talking about SC Prime or cloud storage in general, they're like, what the heck is the difference between cloud storage and distributed cloud storage? So do you have like a layman's uh, answer for the everyday person? Yeah, for sure. That's uh, definitely a good foundation to make sure that we have right before we build on it. Um, so the idea is uh, existing cloud storage uh, businesses are offloading their data into like Amazon data centers, as like Microsoft Azure data centers. And these are high footprint uh, data centers, consume lots of power, uh, and they just have huge amounts of data in, uh, in these spaces. Uh, the idea with a decentralized data center uh, is instead of having these, uh, these couple high footprint data centers that have all the data, uh, the idea is to then distribute across like a multitude of computers and hard drives anywhere uh, that are willing to take on data to get some passive income. Uh, the idea is to open up kind of a gig economy for uh, this important and evolving space. Yeah, and we'll get into the gig economy a little later uh, in terms of these data centers. So uh, is this something that like Google Drive and Dropbox and all the, you know, also consumer facing apps, is that something similar? They're, they're centralized, right? So the servers are like in a big room or a big warehouse and they have to get air conditioning to stay cool and they need engineers to keep those servers running and Amazon especially must have a huge carbon footprint like in New York City, for example on one of their data centers, right? And this must be like a massive undertaking to manage one of these uh, power plants uh, essentially, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, they have, uh, they're hu they do huge business for uh, like Intel and AMD because they're, they're just buying huge amounts of these high power servers. Uh, they must be, you know, Western Digital's like number one customer. They're buying tons of hard drives uh, and all they do is just host this data. But uh, because they have all their data in just, you know, a couple of data centers sprinkled around the world, uh, or you know, some countries might have more. Uh, but then the idea is, if any if any one of these data centers has interruptions or uh, or goes down for whatever reason, that's a pretty major major event, right? So they uh, they're not as well suited to kind of tailoring uh, delivery for for all the spaces for uh, if certain providers go offline, that's a major event. Whereas uh, you know, if if you're if you have the distributed data center. Uh, it's okay if one or two, if one or two hosts go offline. I mean, we'll we'll cover that later. But uh, right, so basically, yeah, we're it, taking the, we're taking these large data centers for people listening or watching. We're taking these large data centers that have say, you know, ten thousand servers, and instead there are say a thousand people in different parts of the world, everyday people like Henry and I, where we have just a regular old computer running in our home with extra hard drive space, and that is hosting people's data as opposed to one large warehouse full of 10,000 you know, servers. Um, that's the big difference, it sounds like, right, between regular storage and decentralized or distributed storage, right? That's exactly right. It, it, it's lowering the bar and it's making it more accessible uh, for, for the, the services to be provided to the, to the people who need it. Perfect. And I heard you mention uh, there was potential interruptions in like an Amazon data center. I've read it on the news. If you go online and you check, you know, hackers hacked into Amazon services, 20 apps went down today. Hospitals are getting hacked, leaking their data, people asking for ransoms. And we can go on and on all day long about the implications here for security risks. Why is decentralized or distributed cloud storage safer and more secure? Uh, wonderful question. So uh, security spans a couple different aspects, and, and this is a major topic. Um, so we're just going to scratch the surface here. But uh, one one common thing that uh, it's important to establish uh, is that the, your 
the customer data isn't just naively placed on just anyone's hard drive and it's and it's totally visible that would be that'd be pretty awful uh, so that's <laughs> that's what the big guys are doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh before the data ever leaves the customer's network it's uh it's totally like encrypted split into pieces each host just gets a little sliver of the data not enough to rebuild anything with uh, and it's all encrypted anyway so it's total gibberish um and so really, into like the metadata, like the small little pieces. Right. So it, it, it uses a pretty, uh, there's an information theory concept, like read Solomon codes, like that, that kind of thing. It's, it's a pretty technical concept, uh, but the gist of it is you, there's a way that you can uh, kind of transmorph data uh, into these little shards where you, may, you might only need something like 10 of the total 15 shards in order to completely reconstruct the data. Uh, so then these shards are just sprinkled around to the hosts. So no one host can even come close to fully recreating your data, but uh, you only need a subset of the total amount of shards in order to have everything recovered. Sounds like it's really difficult to, you know, let's say I'm a, I'm, I'm a business and I want to host my important financial numbers or, you know, really important documents. It sounds like it's kind of hard to hack that. It's, it's kind of hard to infiltrate my company and steal my information. Is that what, what decentralized and distributed storage kind of offers in a way? Yeah, it, it definitely cuts down on your, uh, like on your security vectors because, uh, you know, it's only ever as secure as your network is. So uh, since everything is uh, encrypted and sharded by the time it leaves your network, uh, then I suppose you could assume that they would have to be into your network to come even close to, to having your data. And if, and if that's something, you know, if they're already inside your network, then you have other problems, <laughs> right? <laughs> and at that point, it's not it's not the dis, it's not the distributed cloud's fault. Uh, it's really you know they got into your network, and and at that point, you're probably in trouble anyway. Right. <laughs> Sounds like either way, um, di distributed versus you know centralized is a lot. Just the the so far the uh, the differences are very clear. And another difference that people keep asking me, and I, I'm having trouble answering this one myself because the data is kind of hard to find. Maybe you have a better answer. Uh, I always just say it's cheaper. Is what is the cost difference? Like for example, I have a startup, right? And we host on DigitalOcean or Amazon, and our storage fees for video and other content is very expensive. I mean, we're talking 500 bucks or more per month. Some startups are paying thousands of dollars per month hosting their data. What's the difference if I start hosting on like the Exanet or SC Prime's network? Uh, for these video storage and data for my users, what's what, how much am I going to save? Yeah, so uh, so SC Prime can offer uh, pretty close. We're trying to undercut uh, like something like Wasabi, which is around like six dollars per terabyte a month, something like that. Uh, obviously, it, it's hard to just put up numbers because uh, it depends on a lot of factors, and, and particularly SC Prime, uh, we can tailor to like how redundant do you need the data to be. Um, like how available uh, different storage speeds. So like cold data can be offered for cheaper than like hot data, which is being served a lot. Uh, you need low latency, that kind of thing. Uh, so it, it really can offer a, a diverse marketplace for different kinds of data. Uh, and some will, well, some will obviously have a premium over others, but, uh, but yeah, it, it'll be something closer to just kind of a bare cloud service like Wasabi, which is more like five, $6 per terabyte a month. And then the big guys are are a lot more than that. I'm going to guess they're, they're we're talking. Oh yeah, certainly something like twenty dollars terabyte a month, something like that. And okay. Amazon definitely makes a killer on egress fees as well, so they'll they'll be happy to take your data at an okay price. But if you want to be served your data, uh, they'll they'll charge you for that too. So as like a percentage, we could say something as a guesstimate, or you know something with all the different variables involved. You'd be paying like 60% less on SE Prime versus the big guys? Is that kind of something something yeah. around that? Yeah, I'd be comfortable saying that. That's a pretty decent uh, savings for people out there listening who need to host their data, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and speaking of uh, other you know, people in this space, I did notice there are companies such as Storage and Filecoin and Arweave. And uh, I noticed that their prices uh, in terms of market cap, I know we're kind of venturing into a different territory here, of cryptocurrency and whatnot, um, but this does fall into that uh, you know industry a bit too. Being that uh, SC Prime does have a, a coin, um, why are those companies valued so much higher? You know, I noticed one was like five hundred million dollars, one was like a billion dollars. 
their market caps are so much higher. Do they have valuable software and offerings? Do they have a lot of customers? Like what, what's the difference? Why is SCP, I noticed that they have these exa miners out, they have great software, great team, great community, but the price is kind of behind. What, what, what's your take on it? Yeah, so I've been around the space for a couple of years and uh, for sure some of the some of the big hitters in the in the space like IPFS with Filecoin uh, storage, uh, those guys really hit hard the last uh, the last kind of crypto bull market. So the 2017, 2018 market, uh, these guys all had ICOs. They sold like hundreds of millions or they raised hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and they, they so they really established themselves big early on and have kind of as far as I can tell, they've kind of coasted. Uh, they've got comfortable. Uh, some of them have philosophies that I think are pretty outdated. So stuff like, uh, in, in you know, in my respective opinion, uh, Filecoin with like trying to reinvent a protocol layer, uh, like with IPFS, like they're trying to replace TCP and like IP. Like you're you're not going to wow. replace the internet in my opinion, or at least <laughs> right. you don't have to. You don't have to go you that far. You don't have far. to. Right. <laughs> yeah, these are fine protocols. Uh, you can work within existing systems. And in fact, you probably should because it'll make it way easier for anyone to adopt your network. Um, so these so, guys so, have got. So, so you bring up an interesting point, right? If if these other companies are trying to do something completely different, what is it about SC Prime that's so compelling that, for example, if you had to give me a, a thirty second, you know, uh, pitch as to like what they're doing that's so important and valuable, what is it that they're doing specifically that that makes sense? Yeah. So what uh, what totally makes sense to me is uh, their philosophy of working within the existing way of doing things and existing frameworks. So uh, there was a huge emphasis early on to develop an S3 compatible gateway. So that's uh, that's to totally work with existing protocols and standards uh, to make it as as low friction as possible for businesses to switch over, because uh, it's totally unrealistic to uh, to you know expect businesses or ask them to move over to this totally new way of doing things. You know, what CTO is going to risk their reputation on uh, holding crypto wallets and giving them to their employees, that kind of thing. Like that's totally, uh, I don't know what you're, well, I don't know what you're thinking if you think that's going to happen, but. Right. And from uh, what so I understand, I, is, I see Prime uh, is doing, it, is doing like a non-crypto for customers, right? I heard. Yeah, totally. So they, uh, since there is a company behind it uh, to some, you know, total crypto purists that, might be considered a downside, but I think it's totally a strength. They can provide service license agreements to businesses who are are, are honestly expecting that kind of thing. Um, they want to be assured with you know legal consequences that their data uh, will exist for the period that it says it's going to, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and they can accept regular fiat, like regular money. Just uh, dollars. Exactly, yeah. So, so there are rails uh, built into some of the software that uh, can kind of handle the dollar to coin conversion, uh, but that's all handled under the hood as it should be. Behind the scenes, I like that. And also um, you mentioned S3 compatibility and for people listening who may not understand that, um, S3s are buckets on an Amazon AWS cloud services, right? So basically you're saying any company who is hosting data on Amazon servers, you can now integrate with SC Prime's network somehow, or you can attach to the S3, yeah. it's compatible with it somehow, it's talking to it or? That's right, It's uh, it really is just a matter of changing your endpoint. So you can use all the same applications, uh, your your business flow, your data flow can look exactly the same as it does now. It's really just a matter of changing one URL in, in uh, where your data is pointed to and everything should work exactly the same. Sounds easy to me. And speaking of easy, right, this is now like an Uber or Airbnb uh, kind of easiness of uh, passive income for everyday people who purchase an Examiner on uh, Examiner.net. And this is kind of like a Web 3.0 revolution in some ways, right? So how, how can people get involved in this kind of gig economy situation? Yeah, so... Uh... As you already covered, the Exa Miners is a great way to start. Uh, so that's a device that uh, uh, just has some hard drives plugged in, uh, connects to the internet, and really just is a way of hosting data uh, as easily and as accessibly as possible. Uh, but anybody that has a computer with a fairly stable internet connection has some spare hard drive space. Uh, I mean, I think everybody has you know a couple spare hard drives these days. Um, so just anything that you can leave hooked up to the internet, 
uh, that you can kind of forget about. It's totally hands off once it's set up, very easy. Um, and you can participate in contributing to this distributed data center, earn some uh, passive income, participate in some of the uh, pretty generous uh, incentives that are being given out right now. So you can make, you can actually earn a decent kind of uh, amount of money at some point when the network is full of data being stored on these machines, you're able to actually earn something, right? I mean, this isn't just like a, oh, plug it in and maybe you'll make something, right? Like you, you'll definitely make something, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I'm already making something. I made like okay. $150 in just rebates last month or in just incentives Incentive. uh, last yeah, month. I checked uh, mine too. Yeah, I, I bought one too. And I noticed that I got about $500 so far. <laughs> so it's definitely yeah. it's definitely starting to add up. And um, uh, just for people who are kind of unsure, because it's, it is a technical thing, right? Do you need to be technical in order to own one of these? Or is this kind of like a coffee maker? You just plug and play, let it go? Or do you have to be you know, physical with it? Um, I would say having technical savviness is a is a bonus. Uh, and, and there are some steps that are, so, so it's probably the hardest step in setting it up is uh, forwarding your, your port. Uh, so I won't get too into it, but that, that's a step that, uh, that can't be automated. That's something you have to set on your own network. There's a ton of very good guides on how to do that, uh, but everybody's network is a little bit different. There's no one way of doing that. Um, but if you can, if you can overcome that step, which I think most people can, it's really not that difficult. And we have awesome guides in the, in the SC prime discord who are totally there to help you out. Uh, then it really is set and forget. Uh, but if you want to set up your own, uh, storage provider, so that is, uh, you choose not to buy an examiner or host one and, uh, and you set it up on your own computer, that is a little bit more. Te uh, technically challenging. Right. There's more more steps that you're gonna have to go through, uh, but yeah, there's totally guides. We make it you know make it as easy as possible, and it's way easier than something like storage or uh, or Filecoin, where you know people are asked to have or you have to have these high power you know high power computers. They're doing all sorts of computations. Uh, it, yeah, the bar is just way lower. Yeah, it sounds like night and day. And I did notice in the in the community in Discord, I mean, the everyone is so eager to help and everyone's always available to answer questions. And uh, it's a lot of fun in there too. There's a lot of cool contests. I saw there's a meme contest going on right now and there's coins available for, you know, for uh, as a prize, which reminds me, I did notice recently the coin re recently hit an all-time high of a dollar, which is pretty, pretty mind-blowing considering it was just a couple pennies not too long ago. Um, people keep asking me, you know, should I buy this coin? And obviously no, nothing in this video or this podcast episode is uh, for is financial advice, but why do you think that coin suddenly has gone up so much in value? And what's the coin supply like? What's available? Where can people buy it? Um, how can people invest in SCP if they decide to? Yeah. Uh Good idea bringing that up. That's probably one of the first things people will notice if they look up SC Prime. They'll see the chart and they'll go, holy cow. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they might say something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure how family friendly it would be. Um, so, yeah, the coin price has totally taken off. Uh, lots of different ideas being floated around as to why that is. They all seem equally valid. So, uh, the word is definitely getting out that this project is one to keep an eye on. Uh, SC Prime seems totally undervalued compared to its, uh, you know, compared to its competitors uh, who have market caps like in stuff like hundreds of millions or billions. I have those here. It says if FC if FC Prime was Filecoin's market cap, it would be worth one hundred fifty dollars a piece. Arweaves it would be worth sixty five bucks a piece. Sidecoin it would be worth twenty five a piece. And if it had storage market cap, it would be eight dollars a piece. So just those four companies alone. Obviously, the, the price for SCP could still go a lot higher. Uh, is, totally. is, that, is that the case? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think a, a fair valuation, uh, in my eyes anyway, SC Prime is doing at least as much as these other networks are. And if anything, they're probably much closer to actual adoption and real use and, uh, and monetization of the network. So it doesn't make sense to me why SC Prime would be you know, market cap in only the tens of millions when... Uh, and these other networks are much higher. So it's still early times for people listening or watching. You can still get in while it's early before network adoption kind of takes off and more data starts piling in on the network. 
Um, South Exchange is where I buy coins. SouthExchange.com. That's pretty much like the main place, right? And, yeah, that's uh, right. So uh, eventually has been on there for a couple of years. Uh, they're a good exchange, uh, pretty, pretty unknown. So a lot of people are kind of skeptical when they first hear about it or take a look. There will but be like pretty... a larger exchange in the future, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, with this new with the new higher coin price, volumes are higher. Uh, so so totally the, the kind of numbers that different exchanges look at when they consider listing a coin is stuff like uh, what is the daily volumes? Uh, what kind of market cap is the coin? And, gotcha. and so we're expecting to get a lot more uh, kind of second looks uh, this round applying to exchanges when uh, when they can see that the project's doing doing very well, the volumes are higher. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, let land on a big exchange soon. Perfect. And as like a last kind of, uh, you know, uh, piece of wisdom or information to people listening or watching, um, why should they get involved with SC Prime in general? And what do you think the future of uh, cloud storage looks like in general for like the world? Like what's going to happen? Yeah, I think uh, I think it totally makes sense that cloud storage be the next uh, be the next market to adapt to the kind of gig economy and the share economy. Uh, I think there's no reason why you know everyday computers couldn't be hosting this data. Uh, it just takes the right protocol. It takes the right vision behind it. And, uh, and this is not unknown either. I mean, people have been trying to do this for a couple of years at this point. That's why those competitors have been around for years and have raised the money that they have. Uh, everybody agrees this is a great idea. Um, but yeah, I think SC Prime, really, they have the winning philosophy with not trying to replace businesses or replace protocols, but work within them uh, to offer this kind of Web3 style delivery uh, to businesses that are perfectly happy staying on Web2 terms. Love it. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> awesome, man. I appreciate this, Henry. This was a really good chat. And I think uh, everyone listening probably learned a ton about not only cloud storage, but SC Prime and the future of the gig economy in distributed cloud storage. So thanks again for coming, man. Thank you, Jason. And as always, we'll have another episode next week. Tune in and leave comments, and I will answer every single one of them. Mm -hmm.